Welcome to section 2 of bacteria. This is our bacteria overview figure. In this video, we'll be discussing Clostridium botulinum, which you can see right here. This scene takes place in a secret underground robot fighting arena. The fight is a highly anticipated event, as you can probably tell from the large crowd off to the side watching in suspense. The orange robot is the defending champion of the world, so his title is on the line. The bot fight scene should help you remember Clostridium botulinum. So, bot fight for Clostridium botulinum. Okay, before we go any further, do you notice anything unique about the background? That's right. We've used purple colors to help reinforce the idea that Clostridium botulinum is a gram-positive organism. So, purple background for gram-positive organism. This is a gram stain of Clostridium botulinum. At the end of the bacilli, you can see the spores right here. Notice that the organism stains purple and is rod-shaped. Okay, moving on, notice that we've added this underground crime lord to the scene. He illegally organizes these events because he knows that every time he destroys another robot, he'll make a lot of money. As you can see, he's wearing a mask to help cover up his identity, just in case this party is crashed by law enforcement. Just like in the last video, we're using a mask here to help you remember that Clostridium botulinum is an obligate anaerobe. Again, the mask covers the face and nose, making it harder to breathe, just like anaerobic organisms require less oxygen for proper growth. So, face mask for obligate anaerobe. Okay, let's see who he's fighting. It's a homemade purple robot made from used canned food. This cheap homemade robot here is to help you remember that improperly canned food allows the spores of Clostridium botulinum to germinate. The anaerobic environment of canned food facilitates growth of the organism and allows it to produce a preformed toxin. So adults are most commonly affected by the disease when they ingest this preformed toxin after eating improperly canned food. Therefore, eating improperly canned food can be a risk factor for developing Clostridium botulinum. So again, homemade canned robot for canned food. Just like you probably guessed, the homemade canned robot didn't stand a chance. Notice that the orange robot has pulled off the canned robot's leg, causing the canned robot to begin falling towards the ground. The fact that the canned robot is falling to the ground, or descending towards the ground, should help you remember that Clostridium botulinum can cause descending paralysis. The paralysis usually affects the cranial nerves first, then moves downward, affecting the trunk, arms, legs, and diaphragm. If you logically think about this paralysis, you should be able to deduce many of the symptoms. So, starting from the head and going down, it causes diplopia, dysarthria, dysphagia, and eventually widespread paralysis involving the diaphragm, which results in respiratory failure. We'll include a few of these symptoms in our picture as we go along, but you shouldn't have to memorize each of them if you just understand that the infection results in descending paralysis. So again, descending canned robot for descending paralysis. Also notice that the orange robot is spraying his opponent with some yellow looking glue stuff. You may not have noticed, but it's actually honey. The honey is a surprise tactic used by the orange robot to trap and destroy his opponent. The honey here should help you remember that Clostridium botulinum spores are commonly found in honey. Infants don't have competitive bowel flora like adults, so they're especially at risk of developing infection after the ingestion of spores found in honey. This is why it's advised that infants avoid honey until they are at least 12 months old. As the canned robot is being destroyed, a new contender is waiting in line for a chance to fight the world champion. This kid's name is Hero, and he likes to build robots for fun because he's wicked smart. Don't be fooled by his robot. It looks like a small little baby robot, but it's actually incredibly powerful, and this underground crime lord is about to learn a thing or two about building robots. If you look closely at Hero's baby robot, it looks kind of floppy. This floppy baby robot is here to help you remember that when infants ingest spores of Clostridium botulinum, they can present with a flaccid paralysis known as floppy baby syndrome. Also notice that Hero is holding some M&Ms as he enjoys the fight. In the last video, we used a snail to represent spores, but in this video, we thought a package of M&Ms would be more fitting. M&Ms are similar to snails though, because both have an outer shell, just like a spore has a tough, durable covering. So the M&Ms in this image should help you remember that Clostridium botulinum is a spore-forming organism. Okay, now let's turn our attention back to the honey. The yellow sticky honey isn't just used for eating. It's also a good weapon in a robot fight. You see, honey is super sticky, which is why robots are extremely afraid of it. In this scene, you could say that the honey has trapped or ensnared the canned robot. So in this instance, it's also used to represent a snare. Just like in the Clostridium tetani video, Clostridium botulinum also produces an exotoxin that cleaves snare proteins. This figure was shown in the last video, but the process is essentially the same, so we'll show it again here. Notice the snare proteins right here. These are responsible for releasing neurotransmitters into the synaptic cleft. The exotoxin of Clostridium tetani cleaves snare proteins associated with releasing GABA and glycine, as you can see in the image right here. However, the exotoxin of Clostridium botulinum cleaves snare proteins associated with releasing acetylcholine, 
So just imagine from this image that we'll cross this out and we're dealing with acetylcholine. Because acetylcholine is a stimulatory neurotransmitter, inhibition of acetylcholine results in paralysis. So acetylcholine is stimulatory. Therefore, if the toxin inhibits acetylcholine, then this would result in paralysis. So Clostridium botulinum causes paralysis and Clostridium tetani causes sustained muscle contraction. So they're basically opposite from one another. Hopefully now that you understand the mechanism and the neurotransmitters involved, this makes more sense. So how are you going to remember that acetylcholine is associated with Clostridium botulinum? Well, at Physio, we like to make things easy for you. So we've included this idea in our image. Notice anything different about the canned robot's head? He has a single eye that's shaped kind of like a seed. This seed here is to help you remember that the toxin prevents the release of acetylcholine. Seed sounds kind of like acetylcholine, so we've used it in this image to represent acetylcholine. This girl is the one who made the canned robot, and now she has placed a remote control on the ground as she watches her robot being brutally destroyed. Pay close attention to her mouth. Notice that her mouth is wide open in disbelief. This is because she's heartbroken at her loss and doesn't know what to say. The wide open mouth here should help you remember that Clostridium botulinum can cause dysarthria. Okay, now let's turn our attention back to the underground crime lord. Notice that he's wearing sunglasses to also help obscure his identity. Sunglasses make everything darker, and at night it can make things especially difficult to see. So in this scene, the sunglasses are here to help you remember that the infection can cause blurred vision. We've also added a bow tie on him to look appropriately dressed for this big occasion. After all, his robot is the undisputed world champion, so he needs to look nice for the occasion. The bow tie is here to help you remember that diluted Clostridium botulinum toxin can be administered as a medication. The toxin-derived medication is known as Botox. Botox can be used for muscle spasms, achalasia, headaches, and for other therapeutic and cosmetic reasons. So, bow tie for Botox. Finally, we've added this circular arena with little spikes at the edges to make the fight extra thrilling. The contestants have to be extremely careful because if the robots step too far in any direction, they may land on a spike and lose the fight. Notice how the little spikes around the arena look like immunoglobulins. This is to help you remember that Clostridium botulinum infection should be treated with human botulinum immunoglobulin. Okay, now that you've mastered Clostridium botulinum, let's review with the question. A 33-year-old female presents to the physician due to recurrent and chronic migraines. She has tried multiple medications, but nothing seems to alleviate her symptoms. The physician recommends treatment with a medication known to cause focal paralysis of the injected region. This drug most likely prevents the release of what neurotransmitter? Okay, hopefully from the question stem, you notice that the medication being described is Botox. Because the patient described is presenting with chronic migraines, and the question stem states that the medication causes focal paralysis of the injected region, we can deduce that the question must be describing Botox. As we just discussed, Botox can be used for many purposes, including chronic migraines. Recall that Botox is diluted Clostridium botulinum toxin, so it works by cleaving snare proteins associated with the release of acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft. So the answer to the question is acetylcholine. From the image, recall that the snare down robot with the seed looking eye represents snare protein disruption and prevention of acetylcholine release. So the eye here represents acetylcholine. And with that, you should have everything you need to know about Clostridium botulinum.